and welcome to our 10th episode of Village Eats, our Greenwood Village, Colorado cooking show, where we meet fabulous neighbors, we cook some food, and we have some fun. My name is Kristen Markey, and I am so pleased today that we have two amazing women here on the show. Um, Commissioner Nancy Sharp, uh, who was previously our mayor of Greenwood Village, and we have uh, State Representative Meg Froelig, also documentary film producer, um, amazing, amazing ladies. And I'm so excited that you're both here and took time out from your busy schedules to cook. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you for Glad being here. here. Oh my gosh, we have so much to talk about. Um, and first, we'll, we'll just get started with our, um, with our special drink that I know we've been eyeing up. I've made, I, I prepared before you guys came. I, I'm really excited about this. <laughs> Um, Meg, I'm not so much. about it. <laughs> <laughs> but so, green is good. So green that's is good. good. <laughs> so there's different kinds of green. You know, we, I'm really into green smoothies. And um, I really got into these matcha lattes. So I kind of put my own little twist on matcha lattes here. And um, it's my own, little, my own little concoction. But basically, matcha, do you know matcha is so, so good for you? It's like 137 times the antioxidants than regular green tea. So we got matcha in here. We have some almond milk, um, some coconut butter, some vanilla, and some honey. And I blended it all up and served it on ice. So, all right, you ready to give it sure. a try? And some cinnamon on the top, so. Cheers. Cheers. Right. Thanks for coming, Cheers. ladies. Cheers. Here's to yeah. Greenwood Village. Yeah, green, the green in Greenwood Village. Right. Exactly. Mm. That's good. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I like it. Uh, yeah. I've gotten a big Actually, taste the, of the cinnamon. The after palette is better than the first sip. So they say too that there, you know, there there are so many health benefits to matcha, and there's like stress relief, and um, it's supposed to be like a calming effect, and there's all these good vitamin C and all sorts of good. I could foods. use all of that. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. We all need this <laughs> good need for brain health. Yeah. Anyway, I like it. The almond milk comes through later, mm -hmm. which yeah. is nice. Well, I like At the first, cinnamon. it sort of tastes like seaweed. Yeah. But <laughs> But then it wears off. <laughs> no, I, I mean, seaweed's good. Okay, I didn't taste that. But. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, okay, you don't have or to. Drink earth, it. Earth or earth yeah. or leaves but, or. Okay, a 15 year my 15 year old has this every single day. She like loves this so much. I thought I'd I told share. you my 29 year old is going to be thrilled. Okay. to have this recipe. All right, yes. awesome. Okay. So, so you guys- I'll make it, We'll make it for our children. All right, yeah. <laughs> it's for the children. So you guys have known each other a long time. You both yeah. served on the city council of Greenwood Village. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Sharp was my mayor. We served together um, under her leadership for two terms. Yeah. Wow. Well, it was awesome. really fun and Meg and I were uh, neighbors live in, in the same live in Green Oaks in the same neighborhood and um, so did so, you yeah, convince we got to, to know to, each other to run for it well I think she was really interested and I w it was great I mean we have a lot of representation she knows and knew a lot of the neighborhood issues and and district issues which was really important to come to the council with that kind of information and knowledge so it worked out perfectly I really benefited from the mayor's mentorship and then we were both able to serve with a great guy Mike Logan who was our mm -hmm. co-council person for this district and he really um, was so generous with teaching me the ropes and yeah. he was just a really great guy he was. is there yeah. anything in your time together um, was there anything that you guys you know feel most proud of um, in terms of an accomplishment you know here in Greenwood Village or like just a change that you were able to implement it, it's funny because the great thing about Greenwood Village actually is that it's so well run. Mm -hmm. um, the budget is well managed, the council are well informed, the staff is fantastic. Um, and so it's almost your duty to, it, to, to keep, keep it going, going, to yeah, keep it, to, that, yes, yeah. the, yes. Right. So normally right. you like to leave it better than you found it. Uh -huh. um, that's pretty hard in Greenwood Village because uh, Greenwood Village really does a lot of things right. Yeah. I think during during our term, light rail came. Yes, and that was a really big 
uh, and the development the along issue. the light rail right. station and mm -hmm. ways in which we can sort of foster transit oriented development cut down on car use and of course we have uh, mm -hmm. statewide congestion challenges and very real in Greenwood Village and so the hope is that the light rail mm -hmm. um, can alleviate some of that. Don't you think it's just congestion. getting more and more popular? Uh, you know I popular. think it will as we figure out how to connect um, people within like the half a mile or mile and have more okay. connections that way uh -huh. I think it'll be used more. Yeah. We don't have a lot of uh, spokes coming out of you know easy you transportation the yeah station. you have to drive there or walk there or ride your bike or something like that and and driving tends to be the the way that most people get yeah. there right what about those bikes you know you see like the you know the, the share bikes the share bikes well, and I here? think we want um, we want to increase and there are some but we want to increase corporate corporate partnerships with circulators mm -hmm. so that if you're a big employer within the as as uh, commissioner was saying if you're a big employer within sort of a radius of the station that you uh -huh. provide a pretty comprehensive and frequent circulator service so uh, we're extending we just opened up new light rail stations down south that you know oh, near sky ridge right. hospital and right. there's mm -hmm. some big employers that have mm -hmm. moved in the, down there specifically yeah. for that, so that's great. Right. Um, and we will be able to get to the airport eventually better than we can now. <laughs> yeah. um, you can get to the airport now, you just have to do a couple too many switches for probably yeah. for people's convenience. Yeah. But the more yeah. convenient it gets. Um, but with our wonderful mountains, mm -hmm. it's very hard to give up your car. So yeah. even if you give up your car Monday through Friday, Come Friday, you want yeah. to go someplace, right. and yeah. so yep. uh, yeah. it's going to be a while before yeah. we are able to change. Yeah. And the the neat thing about what they're doing down in um, Sky near Sky Ridge and that whole area down in Douglas County is that they have a circulator bus, kind of like we had with. Right. It's also called the Link yeah. that was in the Tech Center, and so that and the businesses pay in to have that service, which is really. Um, great. They, they feel like there's enough value to it for their employees. So that makes a big difference. Yes. Yeah. So. And our really our biggest challenge in terms of carbon emissions is single occupancy vehicles mm -hmm. on the road. So anything we can do to make more than one person in a car, so yeah. carpooling um, or skipping your car trip even a little Entirely, bit makes yeah. a big difference. Yeah. 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 I love that. Well, we've got a lot to talk about, but we also have a lot to cook. It's a cooking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is a cooking show. Yes. Yeah. So, um, we are going to make a couple things today um, and we'll get start we'll get started right away. So, um, the first thing that we're going to make is a beet burger. Have you guys ever had beet no. burger? Beet no. burgers. Okay. So, I like to try different things like as you can see with the matcha latte, I thought like the beet burger, um, I have a, a great abundance of beets in my own personal garden. So, oh. you know, it always is a challenge to figure out new recipes of what to do mm -hmm. with it. So, I really got into beet smoothies, beet burgers, right? Is the next um, the next step. And I've experimented a lot with the, with the beet burgers and this is a cool combination of it. it has some chickpeas in it, it has some quinoa and, um, but it has these really great toppings so we'll put a little goat cheese on and arugula and wow. um, avocado and it's just really I think they're, they're really good so I hope you guys like them so don't beets have a lot of vitamins and a lot of antioxidants and things like that they do they're I'm so always good hearing you. commercials for you got to have a beet supplement or something like that oh. but, <laughs> I don't know about like, the beet supplement, I but I, mean, but I like so, beets. Yeah. I'd rather have just the beet. And you know what? I find <laughs> like a lot of people that don't like beets were only offered them as pickled beets from a can when right. they were a yes. child. Yes. And so it's like, okay, we can we can go beyond that. Even like our very first episode, um, uh, a gentleman by the name of Larry Wolk was on and he's like, no, I, I hate beets. I hate beets. And I'm like, just try one, just, just try one. And I sliced them really, really thin and made beet chips 
gifts out of them. And he was like, wow, we never had a beet like that. Right. So, you know, kind of right. roasting it or grilling them or... Well, I have to it, tell you, one of my... At Il Fernayo here in Greenwood oh, Village, they have a beet salad. I just, I just had it, it on Sunday. It has the golden beets <laughs> yeah. and the red beets, and it's my favorite thing yeah. there. Yeah, so I delicious. I love that one. Really yep. And I think they do have some, like, goat cheese in there and a mm -hmm. nut in there. And it's just like walnuts or, yeah, yeah. spinach. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's delicious. Yep. Yeah. So much to do with beets. So we're going to do the beet burgers, and then um, we're also going to make some sweet potatoes to put on the beet burgers, or just put them on the side. Okay. And the sweet potatoes are kind of like a sweet heat. It has some, some little bit of um, sugar in there, but then there's some paprika and salt and pepper, so it's got a, like a fun little flavor. Okay. <laughs> and then the last thing we're going to make, also inspired from my garden, is um, shishito peppers. Um, and we're just going to blister them. So we'll just put them in a frying pan. I think that they are the simplest thing to make for an appetizer, you know, not knowing what kind of person you have coming. Like, do they have any gluten intolerances mm -hmm. or dairy-free or whatever? Almost everybody can have a pepper unless you're doing that. What is that one diet when they don't eat the peppers? Anyway, there is one diet of a nut. Anyway. There's always, There's always something. Diet, but right? most always people like the shishito peppers because they are so super mild and you yes. can just cook them up really quick. Yeah. So, yep. so we'll, okay. we'll get the beets and the potatoes in the oven and then we'll, we'll do the shishitos and, and we'll just sounds keep great. talking. Does that sound good? Okay, that sounds great. All right, really cool. Well, let's move the stuff out of the way and um, get going. We are going to start with our sweet potato fries. And um, I did all the hard stuff before you guys came. <laughs> yeah. So if you know people who don't like to have gluten and you don't have like a gluten-free bun, like sweet potatoes to just like cut them in slices and kind of use them as like your bun for your burger is always a fun option. Oh. But for the sake of time today, I just cut them in little kind of traditional French fry sort of sticks here. So, like I mentioned, we have a couple like a couple spices. So we have salt and pepper, paprika. Um, I did some coconut sugar. It calls for you know just like sugar, sugar, but with like a little bit healthier with coconut sugar mm -hmm. and some cinnamon. So we're just gonna mm. put that in the bowl here with some olive oil, and then we'll just mix it all up some olive oil in here and and I always you know I'm not very good at measuring things but on the website there's the exact recipe for all those people that love the exact recipe so we'll just stir this up kind of coat coat our sweet potatoes there's a few little pieces of um, cilantro in there I love sweet potato fries I know so good don't you think they've like gained They're in better. popularity? I, I like, like them better than regular fries. Yeah. You see them more as an alternative mm -hmm. on menus and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Most places offer both regular mm -hmm. and sweet potato. Yeah. They're good. They're good. All right. So these look pretty good. And we're going to roast these um, at 425 for about okay. 20 minutes. So I thought it would be a good idea to just put these in first. And then we'll do our beet burgers. And they'd take a little bit less time. So does that look good to you? Looks really looks good. Looks fine. Yeah. Nice combination of spices. They smell good. Yeah, yeah. Looks okay. like they're getting, yeah. they're getting coated. fully coated. Yeah. We're going to just put these on the trays. You need to spread them out so they're only one layer. Kind of, yeah. We're gonna use um, we're gonna use both of the ovens here today, um, and they're two different temperatures. And I I like the idea of uh, mixing it in the bowl first instead of just yeah streusling olive oil and streusling spices. This I gets do that it more too, even though, right? out. They're a little bit more even. Yeah, but this evenly gets it, coated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I learned something today. All right. <laughs> Already. I yeah. write. Already. I'm One already thing a down. better better. You like person. matcha? <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, I'm gonna be drinking matcha. And, uh, oh my god. Stirring my there go. fries yeah. in the look at that. In Should the bowl. There, so we're gonna... I didn't ask okay. you guys if you like to cook. You just I, I like to cook. I don't do it very much anymore, but mm -hmm. I like it. 
You cook, Meg? I do not. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like to eat. <laughs> Don't we all? Well, that, you're a perfect guest for the show. That yes. So we're just gonna stick these in the oven right now. Little one, yeah. And then we'll just stick those puppies in. That's a perfect size, oven. isn't it? Yeah. All right. Onward. So now we got the beets. And this is so easy because we have a Cuisinart. <laughs> I mean, I oh, do perfect. like to do celebratory meals. Okay. A, a dinner party or Thanksgiving uh -huh. or birthday party or... Yeah. I just don't like that. I don't day feel day. adept enough to do the day in and day out. Yeah. yeah. That's, so that's I tend to grab taste. something, which yeah. is not great. I, I like... I like... I have to use a cookbook. You do? But, yes. I think that's... A, Awesome. Like, there's so many been. amazing recipes. I had a really good friend of mine who never made the same thing twice. Oh, and she's wow. like, why would I do that? And there's so many great well, recipes Well, the internet has that. blown the lid off oh, of yeah. Absolutely. Um, really helpful. Because you can even just enter what ingredients you happen I do to that have all and the time. it will tell you. I, now, I've not done that. I usually look up a recipe or something. I haven't looked at what I have. Yeah. Maybe it's because I don't have all that many things on hand. Anymore. Well, then they, there's also, um, you can say, what five things should I have in my pantry at all times? Uh -huh. and so the one thing, like I do use that, um, you know, just like we'll put in zucchini or put in, if I have like chicken or something like that, I'll just uh -huh. put the one, um, the one ingredient in. And it is so, so helpful. And just to get like simple, like five ingredient recipes. Yeah. Or then I'll sometimes easy. reverse engineer, have something out when you're uh -huh. eating out that you really like. Oh yeah. And then you kind of try to, which I'm excited about the shishito peppers because that's on a lot of menus now and it's mm -hmm. delicious. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be good. Yeah, I was inspired from my neighbor last year who had a huge harvest of shishito. So, and I had never tried to grow them before. I haven't had good luck in my garden with regular peppers for some reason. So I'm like, I don't know if I'll be able to grow shishitos. And I have a huge harvest of them and they're just so easy to grow and they're so small. Uh -huh. um, we actually put them in, um, in one of my corporate gardens this year and we did a, like a little feast and, and everything a couple weeks ago where we harvested them and I just pan fried them and nobody had had them before. I've never had them. So it's so I'm fun. looking forward to this. Yeah. Something local, easy yeah. to grow and super easy to make. So yeah, great. All right. So we'll just, um, can you put that in the sink? And so the, like I said, I, I did, I did a lot of this work so we didn't have to do too much today. Um, so for a beet burger, of course, our main ingredient is beets and the best thing that I like to do is just roast them before. So you have to cook the beets. You can, okay. you know, you can cook them a variety of ways. I like to just roast them. So I just put okay. them on a cookie sheet with some salt and pepper and some olive oil and I roasted them for about a half an hour. Um, so they're all ready to go. But I wanted to show this because that's one, you know, step in this whole process that could be eliminated. And I found these beets at, you can buy them at like King Supers or Whole Foods or anywhere, and it's just organic cooked beets. That's it. Oh. So they're all ready to go. They're not like oh. in vinegar or anything. It's just cooked beets. The cooked beets. And they're good for like smoothies and stuff too, if you like beets and smoothies. So I just thought I'd show you guys. Um, okay, so we got beets, and we're going to put them in our little Cuisinart first. And you don't want it to be too mushy, right? Um, so we're just going to put it in for really small amounts of time. All right, so we're just gonna. That's it. So we're just you chopping. Just pulsed, those, it, just pulsed really. it for just a second. So, so we just chopped those beets up a little bit, and now we're just gonna put in all the other ingredients. But I do have a couple things that need doing. Um, all right, Nancy, how do you feel about um, grating some? I can do that. An orange. Yes. So we have a little that. microplane there, and if you want to grate that, and Meg ginger so um the thing with ginger this is feel free to just zest this or like kind of like this so the thing with the ginger um that i find super super helpful because so many recipes call for fresh ginger but to you know whether you're cutting it and having to peel it is always such a pain so if you freeze the ginger 
And so you probably notice that it's very cold in yeah. your hand. Um, so if you freeze the ginger, then you don't have to peel the skin. It just peels right off and it's much easier to grate. And you can kind of go like this way too, like turn it the other way, turn it that, and like kind of like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe it'll fall in. You got a lot done. Okay, carry on. Okay. And what about those? <laughs> okay, that's good. What about the tubes of ginger? Well, the tubes of ginger are, you know, good. They're just They're not fine. as fresh. They're just not as fresh. And, and this maybe is with cheap, the and frozen tip. They stay forever. They can, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just right. keep it in a baggie just like this. And, um, you know, I can use it. It's, it literally stays for months. So, oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, so we have, that looks good, Nancy. So we have some ginger. We have some parsley. We have some onions that I roughly cut, so I'm going to want to make sure that those um, are a little smaller here. We've got some oats, some chickpeas. So the chickpeas and the tahini, the tahini is sesame paste, um, you know, give it some, give it some, uh, you know, liquid to mix. So far. Yeah, you're good. And then we have an egg, some fresh garlic cilantro oh my gosh so much stuff here's my egg and and so our, that's just one egg just kind of beaten a yep, little bit that's it and then the spices um we have some chili powder and some cumin and then we have some quinoa and you you can do i mean i've done these with black beans um you can do other kinds of um grains if you like but yeah i kind of like the this. quinoa has to be cooked yes yeah, just one cup cooked. Because that would be a rookie, rookie that would, mistake. That would be a rookie mistake, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, was a little... Um... <laughs> yeah. It might be yeah. a little crunchy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So right now I'm just going to put in the chickpeas or garbanzo beans. I've rinsed those. And then um, the tahini, put that in there. Do you guys cook with tahini at all? Started cooking a lot more with it. Kind of takes on whatever flavor um, that you're cooking with. All right, so. It's a lot of onions. It, it, it does smell a lot. It's very strong on, onion smell. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That looks pretty good. The onion, onion Strong. flavor is going away, going away slightly. You're like, no, it's not. <laughs> Standing right here, it is strong. So now I'm going to just add everything else. Um, if you find that it's too liquidy, you can add more oats. Um, and these are just like Bob Red, Red Mill oats. I put a few extra in here. It's like a third of a cup. Um, so if it's too liquidy, I'll add some more. The garlic. And we've got our orange. It's a lot of ingredients. It was a, it was a, it was a little bit of slicing and dicing this morning before you guys came. <laughs> Parsley. All right, and we got our egg. And I'm going to put the quinoa in last. Okay. Um, it doesn't really need to mix so much because it's okay. so fine. Um, but the so make sure this is all mixed yeah. up well first. Yep. And you know, you can do these with the golden beets too. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what kind of beet. People like golden beets, they're so pretty. I like both of them. Yeah. They're all good. More, so you get Very it a easy. little bit more fine this time. Yeah, but we don't want it, we don't want it mushy. I hate to have mushy beef burgers. <laughs> All right. Just do one more quick, and then we can make our beets. 
All right, that was it. That was easy, right? That was easy. Yep. <laughs> Got a little quinoa on the top here. All right, yeah, you mix that in. Let's make our beet burgers. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Okay. This is the easy part, the fun part. Um, do either of you want to help? Sure. Okay. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to fill the measuring cup. And I'm making them a, a little smaller because I actually bought um, little sort of slider buns oh, so that we could all try oh, some and the crew fun. could try some. Yeah. And yeah. So we'll just measure out a little cup and... Oh. I get to have a chance. Yes. Teamwork. And this recipe actually makes quite a few. I think I made a big one. And it's really, and there's nothing in here that isn't, that can't be eaten raw. No. It's all cooked. So we're okay on Yeah. Well, well there's there different egg in there. sizes. There's, oh, yeah, there's there egg. one egg okay. in there, but it is um, a pasture raised organic egg plus it local they have low cooking temperature eggs yeah. too anyway yeah. so okay. we'll be yeah. okay okay Meg, so back, back to you okay. <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to ask you guys we can we can talk right now um you know we've had so many guests on um that have shared like their favorite things about Greenwood Village. And, you know, everybody mentions, you know, the parks and they love our police force because they're, you know, super friendly and, you know, just fantastic in every way. And you guys are kind of on the, you know, you know what's going on in the city. Is there anything that you can think of like, gosh, we should be doing something better here can, that you could share? I'm putting you on the spot right now. Is there anything that no. you can think? I mean, we already talked about that's transportation. Yeah, I mean, and, and that's sort of a focus of growth around Gosh. Greenwood Village too, and the tech center being a um, such a large employment area that it's it's tough to manage those things. Mm -hmm. But I, I think Greenwood Village is just I've lived here thirty four years, uh -huh. almost thirty five years, and. It's always been a great place. I, I think it's a safe community, wonderful neighborhoods, great places to eat. And, yeah. you know, I mean, if one restaurant goes out, another one comes in that's really good and fun and shopping's good. There are just so many. It's close to everything. Yeah. So you I, can't think of anything? There's not too much room for improvement. I just yeah. uh, went on a recycling and um, waste tour of the Eastern Plains as part of a zero waste committee that I'm serving on. Uh -huh. um, and um, so they're, they're appreciative of a single recycling vendor, which uh -huh. we have in Greenwood Village, yeah. picked up on your curb. Yeah. And uh -huh. our recycling rates are pretty high as a result. And so, um, and I have, I was worried about single stream recycling because it sort of feels funny to put all yeah, your recycling right. in one mm -hmm. bin. Um, uh, so the only thing, uh, the only challenge with that is just educating the public on what to put in and, and so that the contaminant right. rate is pretty low. And mm -hmm. Greenwood Village does a great job on educating yeah. folks on what goes in. Yeah, and we just did that at the county. We had a, a demonstration in this woman who does has some sustainability programs for the county. She had a little demonstration and of what you put to be recycled. And mm -hmm. I think most of the people in the room got what needed, what was right to put in, was mm -hmm. correct to put in the recycle right. bin. And, but there were some things that people were, well, I'm not really sure that goes in the plastic numbers or not. Like and pizza yeah. boxes, it's always Anything a big debate. Dirty. Yeah right it's not and clean how, how much you wash out in. your plastic bottle yeah. um, <clears throat> and should you wash it out and do and that sort of thing but definitely yeah. um those so, and those okay, things go then back to help the pizza though can you do so pizza? you can I put it in you can um okay. depending on how greasy oh. um so if it if the box <laughs> and so if it's super greasy bottom uh-huh rip off the top put okay. the clean top in and 
and because okay. the other is just going to end up in, as garbage anyway. Okay. Because some programs have been suspended because people didn't know yeah. what to put in there and what not to put in there, and it cost too much. Right. It, to, it comes to, down to finances. It costs yeah, in process. the sorting process if you're yeah. um, if you're throwing away too much because it hasn't been it, it the uh, improper stuff right. is getting in. Right. Yeah. Like one plastic bag can screw up the whole process. Yes. The, it like gums the, up the machines. Ugh. It has to be hand hand removed. Mm -hmm. the, like the um, King Super is like the single. Right. And okay. and yeah. our grocery stores recycle bags. They so right, right, right. just Those. put your plastic bags separate and right. yeah. take them to the store with yeah. you on your That's next right. trip. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put these in and we can keep talking. Okay. They look really good. They do look really good. And these shouldn't take, because they're so small, these shouldn't take very long at all. Like 15 minutes. And then we'll be ready to eat. So how are our sweet potatoes our, doing? Our sweet potatoes, let's take a look at them. Ooh. Ooh. They look delicious. They are looking really good. We might even want to flip mm. those in a second. Should we do that? I'll find a hot pan and we can flip those. They smell so good. It, sm it does smell like a, like a dessert. Yeah. Uh. Those are looking good. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Those look delicious. You know what I wanted to, wanted to ask you guys about um, recycling is composting. Is that ever going to happen? So it's um, it's difficult in the Colorado climate because it's so dry. So uh -huh. um, big composting efforts require water. Yeah. Uh, which is fine if you can identify a source. Um, but that looks good. So um, either you know hook up some rain barrels and. Combine that with your composting, uh -huh. um, and then there experiment. There are some municipalities that have <laughs> um, curbside compost pickup, um, and they're trying to. The question on all of it is, what is there an end market? So, um, and then I'm sure Commissioner Sharp knows the big wrench in the works with recycling now is that China has uh, closed right. its doors, so um, we don't have a place to um, for our recycling that's already in pallets and bundled up and cleaned and crushed uh, to go. So we need more innovative ways to use um, the recycling stuff post-market. So people are making cool, you know, you've seen like those Adirondack chairs that are yeah. made from recycled bottles and, yeah. um, but there are municipalities that experiment with textile recycling. Mm -hmm. um, Thank there, you. there are items that are big challenges, televisions and oh, mattresses. Right. Mattresses. And well, so, are yeah, and the old style, yeah. huge television that's heavy and, mm -hmm. yeah. um, and it, ha it can't go in the landfill. It takes up a ton of room and it's I'm also sure. so toxic. But um, if you charge $5 um, in some, communities that's too high a price point for folks and so they'll literally Put leave the, the dump with their tv because they were going to be they didn't want to pay the fee and then go illegally dump it on the side of the road and then the county People has to pick that. it up and deal with it anyway out in the western part or i'm sorry eastern part of our county people have done that I, I, it appalls me that um, people feel like you get out in a more rural part of the county and they feel that they can, it's okay to throw a mattress or a sofa out on the side of the road. It's terrible. Yeah. It's a real challenge for the county because the county picks up the tab. Right, well, in up. Greenwood Village though, I mean, with the large trash pickup, it's unbelievable. Right. Like, it's one of my favorite services. Yeah. Right, <laughs> you know? I mean, and that's, that's, that's what keeps our city green and yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, when people move into the village, that is probably one of the most uh, talked about services that totally. we have. Is yeah. that it's you can put anything out by the curb and they will come and, you know, get it. Yeah. And you call ahead if you've got big items and things. I had to do that because I'm cleaning out my garage after a lot of years. And I called and, you know, they said, we'll be there tomorrow. and. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were and cleaned everything out. It was amazing. Yeah. And there are a lot of people, you can even call 
if you've got things that are um, hazardous. Uh, hazardous materials, fertilizer, things like that, that you put on your lawn. You, oh. they'll call, you can call okay. and they'll drop a bag by and tell you, you put everything in there uh -huh. and they'll tell you what day they're gonna come and pick it up. You put it out by the street and they come and- um, They'll do that with it. like Roundup to get rid mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. all the they'll paint. Do. Yeah. All right, ladies, we're gonna quickly make these shishito peppers. Um, and I say quickly because it really takes no time at all. And all we want is for the skin to kind of blister up. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put this on high-ish, maybe medium. And I'm gonna do a little olive oil here. A little. <laughs> <laughs> and these, I mean, you can find these shishitos um, at any farmer's market right now. Okay. Um, they have them in the grocery store too. They're not expensive and the skin is really thin, um, which makes it so mild and easy to eat. So we're just gonna wait for this to get warm and we'll throw the shishitas in there and toss them up. Salt on them. Yeah. And then do salt. you dip them in something well, afterwards? You can, you, can. you know, you can dip them, but I think that you don't need to dip them. I mean, like so often we're used to like, oh, where's a dip? But um, you know, I, I know that to make like a Greek yogurt dip mm -hmm. with some like lemon and some herbs and stuff would be really good. But for, the, for simplicity today, we're well, just and, and, and we kind of like simplicity. for simplicity in yeah. life. Yeah, <laughs> less is more sometimes. Right, right. We're right. gonna taste the the real flavor of of the shishitos. Yeah, so we have a nice a nice big bowl of these guys, and um, this could come from about three plants worth. Oh wow! I mean, yeah, yeah. Huh. And, and these are ones you grew in your garden. Yep. You kind of got a lot. You got a lot in here. Maybe I didn't need to do quite so many. <laughs> okay, be careful, Nancy. Put a little salt. So we're feeding the whole cast and crew here. Yeah. So we want to make sure that great. we have a lot. I think we are. Yeah. Everybody's hungry for these guys. And so you kept the stem on. Yeah. So that when you eat them, you can just hold it by the stem. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, they smell good. Don't they smell good? Yeah. If you don't like olive oil and you don't like salt, you don't like my cooking. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think almost every recipe has olive oil. Well, we you'd probably be a pretty big weirdo. If you yeah. Didn't like we olive. go through one of these almost every week. Is that right? Yeah. For sure. Yeah, for sure we do one a week. And there are more and more places where you can take the bottle and refill it. Yeah, so, okay, see this one right here, how it's yeah. just like a little bit browned right mm -hmm. there? That's, that's, what, what, we're that's what we're for. aiming for. Uh, those puppies are looking good. How do you know when they're done? Um, it, they should be like a little bit like crispy around the, the sides. Okay. Yeah. Okay, see these guys? We got lots that are doing well. So these are good. And we're gonna just let them cool for a second. And we're going to um, build our beef burgers because I'm pretty sure it's all done. And we can take it all out okay. and um, Sounds wonderful. eat. Okay. Our stomachs are growling, smelling <laughs> all this good food. We got our beets. We got our shishito peppers and our sweet potato fries. And now it's time like we assemble it all. Okay and make our delicious Yum. beet burgers. Looks wonderful. Does it look good? Okay, there you go. So take a bun. If you don't want a bun, that's fine. We can build it without a bun. Thank you. And I'm gonna just put a beet burger on there. Oh, they're perfectly sized for these little mini sliders. I'll take a smaller All one. Right. Okay, so for the, for the toppings, I have some goat cheese, I have some arugula and some avocado. What do you Wonderful. guys think? Do you want all yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. So For sure. We'll just do it all because the toppings are the best, right? It makes, I even say for breakfast, you know, like the smoothies are better with all the toppings and mm -hmm. the burgers are better with the toppings. Okay, some goat I'll cheese. have a little bit of goat cheese, okay. not too much for all me. Right. Okay. Thank there you. we go. And we have, so what do you think about the sweet potatoes on your burger? You I, wanna try it? 
I think I'll eat them separately. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would like some separately. <laughs> All right. But I like the idea of slicing it to make a like a bun. Substitute bun, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, now, and we have to try some of these shishitos too. Okay. I'll just put a few of those on the plate. It's colorful. Right? Yeah, it's a beautiful plate. So, what are you guys working on in this, the next session, or anything that you want to share um, in terms of um, legislation or, you know? Well, we're in the county, we're just looking, we're doing some long range planning. Uh -huh. um, you know, we have facilities that are aging, our jail, our courthouse, and we're also trying to really focus in on traffic congestion and how we can make some improvements there. And so we're talking to a lot of citizens right now about, okay. um, you know, the condition in the jail and... Um, Where is the jail? It's over... <laughs> The way, the way we know that is it's over by the Bronco facility. Oh, okay. So the jail and the courthouse are right over there. And they were both built, the courthouse and the jail built um, 33 years ago. And, um, you know, it's, they're Ready. old and, um, yeah. So they, they're going to need to, we need to do some things. They, the central services like the, the laundry medical facilities, the booking and release center are in, in, the, in the middle with the housing around, mm -hmm. and the jail was built for 386 inmates, uh -huh. and now we have an average of 1,100. What? So we are oh triple bunking, and, um, well, you know. But it's just short term? Thing. Like people are just there for they're, a short? They can be if uh -huh. they're, they, Usually sentences are uh, no more than two years. Okay. Sometimes, but still, that's a sometimes long time longer, to be... but sometimes Ooh. it's just a couple weeks. Um, but um, we need to make sure that they're safe, that our deputies there are safe, and mm -hmm. um, the booking and release area um, was sort of built for about 29 people mm -hmm. sort of coming and going at the same time. And now we'll have 80, upwards of 80 in there at a time. And it's just difficult oh. because sometimes people are, they have, we have about 40% of the people in the jail have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have locations within the jail to have programming classes and bring people in from, you know, from the county to work with these individuals. And um, then you add, drug and alcohol issues on top of that and it's the majority of the people in the jail and we're trying we would like to have some programming and the space for some programming that hopefully would reduce recidivism so if these individuals can have some of that programming while they're there and then connect them with services when they get out mm -hmm. that i think makes yeah, our communities safer Absolutely. so so we're talking with a lot of citizens about, and we don't know what, yet what we're gonna do about mm -hmm. the jail and to build jail, it's very expensive, but it's our responsibility in the county. We have to have a jail, and I think we have to have a safe jail for everybody um, who's there. Absolutely. And um, so, so we'll see uh, like where we, We'll make a decision by the end of August and, oh, um, okay. about whether we're going to go to the ballot this year or not. And uh -huh. So we'll see. No mm -hmm. decisions made yet. But I think the, the uh, mental health issues um, are big everywhere. They're a major concern and mm -hmm. making sure that we have facilities for individuals and that they know how to connect when they have issues. Okay. They know who to call. And, um, and we have um, a lot of connections on our website for people to find. Mm -hmm. It's not a county function, but we have resources available. Right. So yeah, that sounds so, great. We're working on like some big, of those things. It's big issues, yeah. I think, and yeah. societal issues yeah. um, today. So what about you, Meg? Do you have anything? Well, we go back and we are in session from January to May. So mm -hmm. we wrapped up a very successful session, uh, super productive. Um, 
we are dealing with the same issues, um, big challenges in terms of mental health in Colorado and um, behavioral health, opioid abuse, um, mm -hmm. in even in our, it's across all communities. Mm -hmm. And so I'm particularly interested in uh, addressing those challenges and with our youth. Mm -hmm. I really think there's a mental health crisis among our youth. Um, so there's work to be done. Wow. Well, yeah. We have a lot of programs that um, focus on um, suicide, you know, and awareness of what's available. And again, we're, we're fortunate out of 64 counties, we're a big county and we have a lot of good resources in our community mm -hmm. to um, direct people to and where they can get help. Um, you know, you look at some of the rural communities in our state with it, a couple of thousand. So we're, our county's about 650,000 people. We will probably surpass uh, population Denver County in the next mm -hmm. 10 years um, in terms of population. Mm -hmm. But some counties in the state have 3,000 people living in their county and yeah, they, they just don't, don't, don't have access to um, health care that they need, particularly mental health mm -hmm. um, services and that kind of thing. So I think we're very fortunate in, uh, in the metro area to be able to do that because it's very important, particularly for young people. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you for all you do. You two You're are welcome. amazing. You're thank welcome. you for being here. Well, this is a lot of fun. Are you guys ready, to, are you ready to have a little bite? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm going to try my shishito pepper first. Uh, I want to try my pepper too. I, I tasted my you sweet did. potato and it was terrific. Mm. Mm. Mm, these are really good. Aren't they good? Mm -hmm. So good. Wow. I love it. I love mm. it. This is a, like a fun... Mm -hmm. alternative and or addition to like your regular grilling you know burger brat whatever just to have to it's offer super flavorful guests something else um is, is always these are fun and different delicious too yeah, the like sweet them. potato fries mm -hmm. mm. they're good on the burger you really need to try it on the burger okay all right i'm gonna put some well, on my burger Nancy and Meg, <laughs> thank you so much to the both of you for being here. I know how busy you are. Um, we are really grateful that you could Super come. Super fun. Thanks and for having us. fun. Cook with us and to learn fun about to all this stuff. Be that with you, you and be with Meg. Yeah. We get a chance you. to a reunion. Work together <laughs> too at the between the county and the state. We work on a lot of it, the um, state representatives and senators. We get to work on a lot of issues and. Um, you know, I think the good thing is that when we have some disagreements we on legislation, we work them out and we do our best to work them out. And I think that's, we have good communication and I think that's really important. Yeah. So. Amazing. Work well together. Thank you, ladies. Um, and from Meg and from Nancy and myself, thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to check uh, greenwoodvillage.com for the recipes, um, links to the show and everything. Um, we always appreciate ideas and feedbacks and su suggestions. If you want to come on the show, let us know. So thanks again for watching and bon appetit. <laughs>